Hello, my name is Tom Stiles, and this is Tom's Radio Room Show. And what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about tuning methods, different ways that you can tune your radio. Now, I don't mean the actual technique. I mean the controls for tuning a radio. And we've got three radios here that are slightly different in the way they can be tuned. And then we have the uh, Grundig 750 in the back here that's uh, slightly different, and I'll show you in a few minutes how it's different. So anyway, here we have uh, one of the Radio Shack portable radios, and it has uh, quite a few different tuning methods. It has the keypad here for direct tuning. If you know the frequency, uh, the station one and listen to, you can just get to it quickly by punching in that frequency on these number keys right here. Another method it has is these buttons here for manually scanning up and down frequencies. I don't know if those show up too well in my poor lighting. There we go. These buttons right here. Up and down button. And then this radio has a, actually a tuning knob on the side here. See that tuning knob? Right there. So, new school buttons, old school tuning knob. Now, we go over to the Sony. This happens to be a SWS7600 and it has no tuning knob. No, in a, not a, no tuning knob. Buttons for direct tuning, keypad, or up and down buttons, or you can also, there's a scan buttons here. So, no old school tuning. Okay, now we go to the Sanjian. Sanjian is kind of unique in that it has, it has the keypad for tuning. It has two buttons here for up, down tuning, and it has this tuning wheel. I kind of like that tuning wheel. And I think this is the only radio, this is a 909X, that has the tuning wheel. No, I take that back. Sony made one some years back that had a tuning wheel on it. Not exactly like this one, but similar. So, this has Direct tune, button tuning, and the rotary dial for tuning. This right here that looks like a tuning knob, that's the volume knob. That's confused me so many times. If I haven't used this radio and I come back to it, I'm like here trying to tune it. It's like, why is the volume change when I'm tuning? That's not a tuning knob. That's why. So this has no tuning knob. It has a tuning dial. And some of you may like that tuning dial. Now, back here we have new, new world and old world, or new school and old school. This has a keypad. It has up-down buttons for tuning, and it has a big tuning knob, which is, I have to use my real hand here. Sorry, Mr. Finger. Right there, this is great for when you're just looking things. You're scanning the band, you pick a band, like 41 meter band, and you're just looking to see what you can find it. Maybe as a non-published station. I like these big tuning knobs. So that's another method. So you got the old school here, you got new school with the buttons. This has old school and new school. This is only what I call new school, and it only has buttons and uh, the keypad for director entry. And then this little baby has the tuning wheel. So that's a couple of options. There's other options out there. I'm, since I'm 100 years old, I prefer the old school for looking for stations. Now, if I already know what station I'm going to listen to and the frequency, yeah, I'll use the buttons. That's what I like about the 750 is that it gives you both options and it gives you that big tuning wheel, or knob I should say, not a wheel, 
knob on the front here to tune this thing. Now, where I'm coming from is the old, old radios. Old as me, if you can believe that. They only had tuning knobs. That's all they had because they weren't digital. So they didn't, you couldn't push any buttons. And that's what I'm familiar with and that's what I like. Now, if I swing the camera up here, I'll show you an example. Right up there is my, one of my many Collins radios right up there. That happens to be a Collins 775A and Although, let me scan the camera up a little bit. There we go. You can see it has this huge tuning dial. Big, big, huge monster tuning dial. And, uh, and of course, another thing that I didn't mention is that old school had these analog, some people call them slider or dial for indicators, where all these radios over here wherever they went, there they're someplace, all these have digital displays, even the 750. So you don't have an analog display, you don't have a dial, so to speak. I kind of miss the dial, but I definitely would not trade having a numeric output, a digital output of the frequency, because that tells you exactly the frequency on and if you're looking for a particular station at a particular frequency, those are ideal. I mean, you can take an analog radio. Now, granted, the 750A, and it's the 750A is uh, HF, excuse me, ham bands only. It does It's not a general coverage receiver. It's ham bands only. So it only tunes the amateur radio bands. It won't tune the international bands. I have other Collins radios and Helicrafter radios and Hammerlin radios that are general coverage and they'll tune the whole shortwave band. And um, a lot of them have these uh, dials, I'll call them, where they're very precise and they're really spread out so that you can tune down to, you know, uh, 100 kC. So, so it's pretty easy to find a frequency. But your inexpensive analog, I'll call it, slide rule um, radios, and here's a good example. This uh, $20 Japanese Chinese radio has analog tuning on the style on the side here, not very precise, and then it's got this very crude. <laughs> Um, slide, I call it slide rule dial. So it's pretty hard to tell what the frequency is. And, you know, you get what you might, you pay for. You know, this is a $20 radio. It's a, it's a knock around radio. This one also is an MP3 player. So it's good to just kind of take with you to the beach or the picnic and not risk this getting damaged by salt or salt water or sand. So, this is the real old school slide dial manual tuner. You know, this is this thing is not even very precise. It kind of just jumps around. So anyway, that's um, kind of a review of types of tuning mechanisms. Uh, there are many, many more, of course, and I've just shown you a few. Um, some of the um, some of the small little portable radios. They, uh, I'll show you one here for instance. Here is the Eaton, little Eaton radio. This just came out, and all it has is um, buttons here for tuning. Plus, it does have this little tuning uh, th uh, th thumb, thumb wheel, I'll call it, and it makes it you got to be pretty sensitive, otherwise you'll just scan right through the band and miss what frequency is going. Um, and it does not have, it has the, the clock thing here. This is the whole selling point of this thing is this clock thing, uh, so you can select a time zone. It doesn't have a keypad. So this one, kind of in general, is a little 
cumbersome to tune. So even though, like I say, it does have this little thump, whoops, this little thumble wheel uh, for tuning, it's a little cumbersome to tune because that wheel is so small, and it's not a knob; it's a wheel. I call it a wheel. So anyway, that's um, my synopsis of different tuning methods that's available. Uh, leave a comment on what you prefer or uh, what do you think about the various methods. Are you old school like me that likes a tuning knob? Or, or do you like this Sanjian wheel concept? You know, it's, it's, it works pretty good when you're scanning the band. Unfortunately, the way I'm using it right here, I can't see the, can't see the display, so I'd have to use my other hand. So anyway, appreciate you watching. That's the show for today. Bye-bye.